it's kind of jungly out here. You know, this is New Mexico. <laughs> ah. Oh, this bit's thorny, Brittany. There's a baby grebe fight. Oh, I missed it. They went behind the thingy. <laughs> well, what's up guys? Welcome to a very green and buggy episode. You wouldn't think this is New Mexico, but uh, it's been raining quite a bit. Monsoons, monsoons really do a number. So why are we here? We're here for this guy. Uh, this is the eye footage the Cobra 3 Strike, I think that's what this is. So first of, all, uh, first of all, this is definitely a sponsored episode. So huge thanks to iFootage for sending me this. Um, they reached out to me a few months ago and asked me if I wanted to try this. And I had one question. I said, will it handle about 10 pounds? Because <laughs> that's what this business is. And they said, yeah, it should. And they sent me this head with it. And I said, all right, let's do this because I've had a lot of questions from you guys and from myself. Um, if you're new to the channel, I'm a wildlife photographer, but I'm also an everything else photographer, landscape, astro, sports, the works. I never use a monopod uh, and I never use a tripod either unless I'm doing a time lapse or something. But all my wildlife stuff uh, that you've ever, if you've ever seen anything from my channel, uh, every single thing I've ever done with wildlife has been handheld, including everything I've done with this lens. But I figured it was about time to uh, give my broken shoulders a, a rest and, and see how the monopod does. So there's a couple of things I want to go over. This isn't going to be a full review or anything. Uh, this is just going to be like, how am I using this and why did I think it was good for me? And maybe that will translate into why it might be good for you too. So I'm going to go over some of the features that got me interested in this and then how I've been using it over the past few months and how it's working out. All right, so let's go over a couple of the features. Uh, first and foremost, like I said earlier, the my biggest concern was can it hold my setup, which is I've got the 500 F4, the Mark II version, uh, 1.4 teleconverter, adapter, R5. All of this weighs just a pinch under 10 pounds uh, and I'm happy to report that it holds it just fine. So the head I think comes separate. You could probably get it as a bundle maybe but I think they sent me the head separately so I, I don't know if that if that comes with it or if it's a bundle but the head itself handles over 10 pounds as well and like I've got it when I lock it down uh, there's a little bit of play here but that's this thing. We're going to talk about this in a minute. If you do video, this head is amazing. I haven't used a video head in a long time um, because I just, I do all my stuff handheld, but man, this thing is super smooth with its panning on, on both axes. It's really smooth and I do do video. So it's been nice having this to uh, do the video with this. Okay. So let's talk about the next thing that everybody probably notices when they see this thing. It's, it's kind of chonky down here and that's because it's got this handle, this grippy thing. And you can see all these chonky grippy bits here and here. So that's because <laughs> it raises and lowers. I don't want to say automatically, but uh, much easier. So when you squeeze this handle, you can either lift it up or you can squeeze it down. So to bring it up, that's as high as it goes. That's the other thing that I really enjoy about having a monopod or at least maybe this monopod is that I'm six foot one. So to have something that I can use all the way and then, you know, to be able to not have to bend as much if I need to go a little bit higher, this has been absolutely wonderful because none of my tripods, I don't have any big tripods. I don't have any um, like legit landscape or wildlife tripods. I don't have gimbal heads and I don't have, because they're, they're big, they're heavy and they're expensive. And that's just usually not the only big, heavy, expensive things that I want <laughs> is this lens. So having something that can go higher than my regular uh, travel tripods is very nice. And then having this be able to raise and lower like really easily. I've been 
enjoying that more than I've, I, I wasn't too sure uh, when I saw this, I thought maybe it was a little gimmicky and I thought maybe like, how am I going to be able to deal with this, uh, with this giant lens? But, you know, I mean, it, it is super easy to deal with and I am very happy with that. And wherever you lock it, it stays. It's not going to sag. It's not going to sink. Uh, it's very, very sturdy. Okay. So let's talk about these feet now. The feet are wonderful. Um, they provide a lot of stability. They do add a lot of weight, but if you need something stable, this is your jam. And let's take a look at this guy right here. So this little clampy thing, uh, this little, so that you can press it with your foot like that, that enables you to move this guy all around. It'll lock just like that and then it's back to solid position. So now I can't rotate it. Now I can just pick it up this way. But if I push the button down, bam, now I have full rotation. So when this is down, it gives a lot of movement. And then if you open up your video head, you can be able to do stuff like that and really move it around. And that's wonderful. All right, so that's the feet. They are wonderful and they are not necessary. So that's the other cool bit. Let's talk about the next cool features on here. And that's these little red guys right here. So uh, this one, let me just lock this down just so I'd be safe. So this one right here, if you just hold it down, then this whole thing comes off. And then if you just, it just snaps back on and clicks in. And then there we are. Let me just, I can pop this off. And then I can also, I can also take this out. So if I don't need that, and that just clicks in. And now I've got a ground pod. So for wildlife, especially for waterfowl, uh, like I'm doing here, this is amazing. And if nothing else, like even if I don't need the monopod, this little guy is just wonderful because, you know, these, these uh, metal, metal tripod legs are very strong. And then combined with this head, it makes it nice and low. I've still got all my panning abilities and I can get much lower to the ground. So this is really cool. I will also say that you can, um, these feet lock and you can push this button here and then you can adjust these. So if it's not level, uh, you can make it different, different locking levels there. Yeah, angles is the word I was looking for. Thanks, camera lady. So, and then another cool thing is when it's like this lowered, you still have the clippy business down here, the, the little, uh, this guy. The what? Latch. The latch, yeah. Camera lady coming in clutch with the words again. Sometimes I can't speak. So yeah, you've got the, you've got the latch there, and then you've got this uh, ability to still rotate it and level it out a little bit. There is a yellow-breasted chat and a red-winged blackbird right here in this tree above me. So that's what you guys are hearing. The other cool thing about the monopod is that if you don't want the legs and you don't want the weight, then you don't need them. And this bit is strong enough and totally fine to use just like this. So then, and that makes it a little shorter and a little more packable. So that's cool. But that's the only other downside is that this right here is as short as it goes. So you can still fit this in like a larger bag, like it'll still fit uh, strapped to the tripod section of my, my Shimoda's, like my 35 and my 50 liters. But if you have a smaller bag than that, um, and if you don't have a bag that has strappy business on the outside, then this might be, you, you might be just uh, hand holding, wielding. But other than that, this thing is very nice. And this by itself is a lot lighter. So you can put a different head on here too. Like I, before they sent me the head, I had just a regular ball head on here and you could put a gimbal head. Uh, you can put whatever you want on here and they give you, I guess I should show, where is it? Um, they give you this, this business right here. So this is a, a quick mount to uh, it's any tripod head that's three eighths. So, which is standard for all the tripod heads. So I just had like 
my regular like ball head or if you have a gimbal or whatever you can you can attach that all right so all back together nice and stable obviously i wouldn't recommend leaving this alone you know and walking away from it especially with something like this on there but if you're within catching distance i don't think anybody but you would do that <laughs> anybody but me camera lady seems to think that i have a bit of a reckless tendency with bags and gears and tripods and the one time it fell into the river okay the one time yeah the one time is because i had the old tripod and it went this way and then i turned to grab a filter and then it, that was the day after i bought my 5d mark three the we're not going to talk about that time that was something completely different anyways the point is this is uh, quite stable and I feel comfortable leaving it like this, at least giving my hands a break as long as I'm within catching distance and the ground is level-ish. Um, there's a bit of play to it, but all when, all, when the legs are out and the, when the little feet are out, this thing has been rock solid. All right, well, I really don't have anything else to say about this. Uh, I mean, it's a monopod. It's got a lot of cool features. It works really well. Walking with this thing is going to be a commitment. I think you probably know that with any monopod that you have, if you're going to be hiking with it, it's it's a commitment, you know. So um, making sure everything is locked down here. But basically, you can throw it over your shoulder and you can just walk like you would with a giant tripod and gimbal. Uh, you can flip it around. You can throw it over your shoulder, whatever way is comfortable, you know. Th this is pretty comfortable like this like this whatever and then just hiking with it but you know it it's a commitment you know it requires uh, a lot of effort but it's still I mean the, that's the main reason I don't use a tripod is because like tripod it's just big and clunky and and leveling tripods and but being able to just set this down and then just you know super quickly whatever I need it's like so it's more stress on your shoulders to carry it out, but it takes a lot of stress off when actually filming. Yeah, yeah, what camera lady just said. And she said that it's more stress on your shoulder, like anything would be with any kind of monopod or tripod, but it's way less stress when you're just out here. So if you're just coming to a place where you know you're just going to hang out or you're not going to hike that far, this thing is amazing. And I've been really happy with taking that weight off of me. And I was really concerned with the limitations that would be put on how fast can I, you know, move around and all that stuff. But I, this has done a really good job at alleviating those issues for me. So I'll have a link down below. Huge thanks to uh, iFootage again for sending me this and opening my eyes to the world of monopods. There's a lot of different things you could do with this, a lot of different configurations and whatnot. And I'm looking forward to just having it around for when I need it. If you have any questions about anything that I missed or didn't go over or whatever, leave those in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them. I'm going to try to go and see if I can get you guys some more footage. This lake is crazy right now. I mean, I know it's summer and it's hot, There's, but there is way more algae than I've ever seen out here. Uh, but the open water, I'm going to go look for the osprey. We have like three osprey here. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm going to go find them. But if not, um, here's a bunch of the shots that I've taken with this uh, recently. And hopefully some extra B-roll. Oh yeah, real quick, uh, workshop stuff. I have a newsletter. I don't plug that enough. Camera lady keeps telling me I need to plug my newsletter. If you guys are interested in workshops or just behind the scenes stuff, I try to put one or two emails out a month. And that's, you just go to my website and you can sign up for the newsletter for free. Workshops, I got two spots left for Scotland, birding, May 2025. Very excited about that. Um, Bosque, central New Mexico, cranes, snow geese, all the goods for winter. This winter, I do, I run them private workshops from November through February. And December is filling up. So I have some late November some very early December and some January stuff. So if you're interested in private workshops for Cranes, Bosque, all the works, check those out, uh, email me and we'll make that happen. All right, that's it. I'm gonna go shut up and try to find some birds now. Yeah, like that one. <laughs>
Oh, it is bright over here, Brittany. And muddy. Holy cow. Ah, 